Good morning everyone. This is Jeffy Kennedy author of epic fantasy romance. I'm here with my first cup of coffee. Delicious. <sighs> Today is sit with me Friday woo 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 uh, August 12th 8 12 2022. So um, end of another week. Hello mosquito. <sighs> so here we are. Uh, I've I've had a good week. Um, I am um, within striking distance of oh I didn't open it yet of my uh, 10,000 words for the week which makes me happy because I'm happy. Um, yeah and I'm at uh, little shy of 54,000 words on the book written 8085 this week. So uh, I have no wood to knock on does a grapevine count. Um, I think I should hit 10,000 for the week which is good because I'm traveling the next four weekends in a row which hopefully will not disrupt my productivity. but we'll see we'll see should be in good shape. Uh, I uh, committed to the release date did the cover reveal for shadow wizard yesterday. Woo! So I'm putting it on the show notes today it will be everywhere now. I was experimenting with the um, nine square grid on Instagram and it looks really cool now that it's all assembled. I did the gradual release like little bits at a time on Instagram and I think I don't think that did anything uh, very few likes throughout the day tons of likes overnight uh, once the whole thing was assembled. So yeah Tohi agrees. Uh, you know maybe you know like the bits and pieces are just not that interesting besides which Instagram only wants reels these days. So um, I'm not sure I would do it that same way again but I do like how the cover looks on the nine square grid. It means that I have to be really careful what I post to Instagram now because if I do one it'll like shift it and break it up. So I have to do like three or nothing so that it stays. It's the uh, the travails. But yeah uh, it was fun to see people immediately start pre ordering. Thank you. Uh, excited for you all to read this book. It's all good and tomorrow morning we are flying to Las Vegas Nevada um, not driving an hour north to Las Vegas New Mexico and um, we're going to go see Celeste Barber. Very excited and going with uh, good friends Megan and Charlie so it should be a good party. We should have a great time. Little party weekend. So there will not be a podcast on Monday morning. Sorry mom <laughs> because we'll be flying back that morning. I suppose I could do like a super sleepy from the Las Vegas airport podcast but let's face it we know I'm not going to. So the big challenge for me will be to see if I can get 2000 words on that Monday. That's my uh, personal challenge. I hope that I can I might try it on the airplane to at least get it started maybe at the airport to sort of get it rolling. I'm definitely noticing a pattern lately you know I get most of my words in that third hour. Some days it's pretty even the three hours but um, especially this week like my first hour will be pretty crappy and then the second hour a little better and then I'll get like 1200 words in the third hour. So so it goes but I'm 
I'm happy with the results of going for 2000 words a day instead of 3000 words a day. I am ow. <laughs> I kicked my legs up and sort of hit the under circle in the table. Ouch. Boo. Uh, when I was doing 3000 words a day I would definitely notice the mental drain at the end of the day and I would or at the end of writing and I wouldn't have um, bandwidth for much else. So 2000 words a day gives me reasonable bandwidth for dealing with business dealing with uh CIFWA stuff. We did our business meeting yesterday and it was I think it went well seemed to go well. It was funny because we're doing it on zoom and so the board is on chat with each other reminding each other of things and so forth and somebody pointed out that we have the eternal uh, uh, difference of whether people say sifwa or sefwa. Um, I tended to be more of a sefwa person until someone commented on it. I said I thought that's what it was supposed to be but we can't agree. And I said, well, at least it's not an argument like GIF versus GIF, which of course then immediately started the I cannot believe that there are people out there who want to pronounce it GIF. And director at large Monica Valentinelli said, well, did you know that the creator came out and said it's supposed to be pronounced GIF? And I said, yes, but he's wrong, <laughs> which she was like, well, what do you mean? I'm like, he's just wrong. It's it's not. It's graphics interchange format you don't suddenly change the graph part to gif. Very rarely is a leading g pronounced with a zh sound instead of a g sound. So and besides gif is already a peanut butter but executive director Kate Baker says that she is a gif kind of girl. I just can't even. So I was thinking about something <laughs> amazingly enough. I've just finished reading a book by Brigid Kemmerer. I think she says Brigid with a hard G. We're going to go with that since it's the theme of this episode. She could be Bridget but I think it's Brigid Kemmerer. Uh, and I read her book a curse so dark and lonely which is a YA fantasy romance kind of there's not a lot of romance and it's the one that I alluded to yesterday when I was saying that you don't have to have hot sex. Um, in fact there's no sex on or off page in this book. Um, the closest it gets is a kiss and uh, yeah. So which normally is kind of a deal breaker for me. Twilight was an exception because there was so much sexual tension there while it was perfectly chaste and I really enjoyed that about it. Um, this one I just really enjoyed the book. I thought it was um, a really interesting take on Beauty and the Beast and I thoroughly enjoyed the story. So and I read it because uh, Brigid was at a polycon and a few tables down from me and she was a ticketed author uh, because she had so many people wanting to get their books signed. Uh, so she had pretty much you know nonstop line and I didn't get to meet her. I that was one thing several people asked me about a polycon if we um, you know like if I talked to such and so or met so such and so and I was like you know we didn't really have opportunities to mingle uh, when the authors were all present in a place we were doing the signings and you really couldn't leave your table for long because there were so many people wanting to come which was great. Uh, and then there weren't any events that were just for the authors which I am going to suggest that they add I hope that they will. Yeah I was just thinking that they haven't asked for a feedback form. <laughs> they may not want our feedback. I might just um, have to message. So <laughs> I, I also think that they're not getting some of my emails because I send from that jeffykennedy.com email which tends to go to spam. It's one of the things about having your own domain that's uh, 
spamol spamorific. So I was just thinking about I should give them my super secret email address for people I actually want to hear from anyway. Uh, so yeah I was you know like oh I've never heard of Riggy Kimmer and Jennifer Eastep next to me said because we would chat during our lulls our rare lulls and she said how can you have not heard of her she was at Kensington at the same time we were and I was like I don't know and she said well that she'd really like this book a curse so dark and lonely and it it was great it was really good. So um and I'm now reading the sequel a heart so fierce and broken interested to see how that goes there was a love triangle in the first book and it's kind of being carried into the next book and I'm I'm actually good with this one I don't usually like love triangles but I like this one anyway in the acknowledgments Briggs says uh, that she wrote this book because her husband said to her it was a real dark point in her life she'd been depressed and her husband asked her when was the last time that she wrote something um, that was just for her that she enjoyed and and she you know that she wasn't under contract to write and and she realized it'd been a long time so she wrote this book just for her and then it's really has been the thing that launched her this has made her famous which great for her and it's interesting because of course a polycon is belongs to Jennifer L. Armantrout. Oh here comes Isabel uh, affectionately known as JLA which is much easier and she did this you know fantasy romance series recently um, which I always forget the name because now there's so many knockoffs but you know heart of blood and ash or whatever it is um, you all know right vampires and werewolves uh, that traditional publishing wouldn't take they said that they didn't see a point to it and now she's done it with um, the gals who do a thousand and one dark nights so it's sort of like a little startup press Uh, it's like one step different from self publishing which is interesting you know that we've got all these sort of phases of you know it's no longer just traditional publishing or vanity press there's all of these different um, levels of publishing self publishing and assisted publishing. <clears throat> so Jennifer has spoken a number of times about how she really wanted to write this series and traditional publishing didn't want it and she wanted to write it anyway so she did and how much it meant to her and now it's been phenomenally successful. So and these are interesting stories to tell ourselves and it's funny I'd already written down a note to talk about this when David told me a story just as I was making my coffee to come out here he said that um, this gal in a group that he follows that like does is into online gambling stuff and he said how that she woke up from a dream that she won a jackpot of a million dollars and so she got up and she went and played forty dollars on one of the online slots games and won one point three million dollars and so so there's a correlation here right we we love to tell these stories uh, you know she woke up from the dream that she won the jackpot she went and played forty dollars and she won the jackpot um, Brigid and JLA uh, wrote the book of their heart they wrote wrote the thing that they really wanted to write there's Isabella in the background rooting around oh and actually peeing sorry <laughs> she loves a little uh, al fresco uh, opportunity I'm glad she is at least discreetly shrouded by the vegetation <laughs> Isabel well there's a there's a lot of um Goody reality here at first cup of coffee. So and, and I feel like she's ruined my my carefully assembled story right. Oh now she okay hold on. 
it turned out she was prepping her spot and so I spared you all the actual uh, display. You're welcome. At least if you're on video. <laughs> so the thing is these are all examples of survivorship bias because we never tell the reverse story right. Um, we do not tell the story if the woman woke up in the middle of the night from a dream that she won a jackpot went and played her forty dollars and lost it all. She does not get online and tell this story because it's a non story right. Same is true for writing that book that we long to write that's the book of our heart or that you know everybody says oh we don't know what we're going to do with it. We write that book we love that book we decide to self publish it and it goes nowhere. It's not a story. The exception being the gal that I talked about yesterday who shared online how her self publishing experience did not go well that she spent you know $10,000 and made about 750 and how that is a thing that happens. So at that point it becomes a story but it's not the story we want to hear right. We love a story like Bridget Kimmer or JLA where they persevered wrote the thing that they wanted to write that well Bridget sold hers to traditional publishing so that's a different tale right. But you know and then it does really well and we love that we love that vindication the triumph of the thing that no one wanted and then it does really really well and uh, it's it's a wonderful kind of story it, and it inspires us and it keeps us going which is something that we need right. And do not get me wrong because I love hearing Jennifer talk about that story. I've heard her give the speech a couple of different times and it is it came for me uh, at a time when I really needed to hear it. <clears throat> I don't know why I'm a little hoarse this morning. A horse is a horse of course of course. <laughs> um, yeah the first time I heard it came at a time when I needed to hear that and and it helped me put dark wizard out there which definitely was a story for me that way where uh, it was slightly different uh, for those of you who haven't heard me talk about it before dark wizard was a story that I had been mulling for a very long time. Um, I mostly just hadn't gotten around to writing it however because I was busy with other things and I also wasn't sure how I was going to execute it when I told my agent about the idea she loved it. Uh, when I showed her initial pages she loved it and then when I finished writing the book she no longer loved it and she did not want to take it out on submission because she said she didn't know any editor that would want to buy it. And but the difference for me there was is I had lots of other people who did love it everybody else who read it freaking loved this book and it, including people you know who will tell me the truth. <laughs> so and then it did very well when I self published it and it helped to hear Jennifer's story. And then I heard it again because I asked her to give the same talk to my uh, local RWA chapter and and I enjoyed hearing it again then because it does help to hear these stories of people persevering of writing the thing that they want to write. It's a difficult business if you're not writing the thing you want to write it's perilously close to not being worth it. But there are lots and lots of times that we write the thing we want to write and it does not do phenomenally well and that doesn't make it any less worth it right because we still have to write the thing we want to write that's part of being creative. Um, and I'm getting low on time but I still want to touch on this. We watched this four part documentary uh, on Amazon Prime called women who rock highly highly recommend 
this documentary. It's incredibly well done. It really traces the history of women and rock as built, uh, starting from, you know, like gospel and the girl bands of the fifties and sixties, all the way up to present. And by the time they get to, uh, more recent times, there's just way too many to touch on, but they have interviews with lots of women. Uh, some are throughout the whole thing, like Nancy Wilson from heart, Pat Benatar, and they talk about how difficult, it, difficult it was in the beginning. And there's this, it's wonderfully put together because there's this chain of people reflecting on their influences. So you have the people coming up and talking about listening to Nancy and Ann Wilson. Uh, or listening to Pat Benatar and practicing the chords, listening to those women and being inspired by them. And then the uh, older women talking about seeing the younger ones coming up. And it's wonderful with the connectedness and the women helping women and talking about how difficult it was in the industry. Cheryl Crow is in it. A bunch of people are in it. Shania Twain, Chaka Khan. Uh, other ones I was not familiar with. Uh, Mavis just Mavis. I can't think of what her last name is from the old gospel days. Um, and one theme that emerges and David and I, this, I think I've mentioned before that watching stories about musicians is a great Venn diagram overlap for both of us. Cause he loves music and musicians and I love the creative aspects. So we love it when we can find shows like this, but I was pointing out to him and he was agreeing because I'm right <laughs> that over and over, they would mention having to take control of their own careers, having to, um, that you can't rely on anyone else to do this thing for you, that you have to take control of your own career and make it be the thing you want. And I think that's very true of all creative enterprises that as I often say, nobody will ever love your book as much as you do. And it's um, I think it's probably true of, of all creative enterprises that you are the one who will care about it most. And if you don't care about it, then it's not worth it. So on that note, I will leave you looking forward to seeing Celeste Barber's stand up act tomorrow night. And uh, I will talk to you all on Tuesday. You all take care. Bye-bye.